This is a 2003 Mercedes-Benz ML350 with a Mercedes 112 V6 engine. And I'm going to show you how to replace the auxiliary water pump, which is this device right here. This is the same for uh, not only all of the W163, which is the first generation ML, but also many of the other engines, the 112 engines, which are V6s and V8s. So the first thing is just to take a note of where the water pump is. You'll know yours is broken if there, there's no noise coming from this after the car has been shut off. Also, when you hold the tube, you should be able to feel coolant moving through it after the car has been shut off even. You can put a stethoscope on it and listen, and if you don't hear anything, then it's uh, probably not working. These go out quite a bit, so it's not really worth pulling them from junkyard vehicles because they're usually seized. This is the part that we're replacing. I took this off another W163. It was a 2005 ML500. And as you can see, it's a Bosch part. And the part number is 3920200044. You can replace it with that same part but it costs a lot more for some reason than uh, this part, which is same part number, but instead of ending in 044, it ends in 039, if I can get it to focus. There, it ends in 039. And this is uh, usually put in Audis and VWs, it's my understanding, but Many people on bensworld.org and other forums have been using this instead of this because this is $71 at places like FCP Euro or Auto House. It's a Bosch product just like the original. And this is usually like $250 or $300. The only difference is that the diameter is slightly larger on the hose, on where the hoses connect. All right, so there's the original. Let's see, I can put them together next to each other. And you can see that the... That's a little distorted because of the angle. But you can see that the hose diameter is a bit larger on the Audi one, the 70 to $71 one that ends in 039. But the hoses fit just fine for the Mercedes hoses. So uh, I've replaced these with these before and I'm going to do it again on this one. Now here are the steps. The first thing is we're going to remove the air box just to give a little more room to reach it. So you're going to unclip these just like that. There's one here, here, here. There's two here, one on this side, one here that I've already unclipped and one on the bottom. So unclip all of those and then you'll be able to pull the air box out. Once you pull the air box out, you'll see this. This is the air filter. Remove it so you don't accidentally spill coolant on it. And then also take a bag and put the bag over the air intake here to protect it from dust. Next, you're just going to pull up on this boss. This is a rubber mount and, and it will come right up. Okay. And that gives you a little bit better access down here to the electrical connection. Now you can see this electrical connection. It's a little tricky, but you have to squeeze in on these metal parts and then wiggle it out. I can't do it with one hand, but that's all you're, that's all you're doing. It, it does take quite a bit of force. Okay, next just spray some water on these areas here to clean these up so that you don't get dirt into the coolant because what we're going to do next is we're going to clamp these with these hose clamps so that we don't have to drain the coolant and you'll lose just a tiny little bit of coolant and um, it's a lot quicker and easier to do so you want to clean this up real well now these hose clamps I got these from Harbor Freight part number 65116 
and these work really well. I'll show you how they, they go on and you just clamp it real tight and it will stop the coolant from, from dripping down. If you don't do that, you'll lose a lot of coolant because as you can see this reservoir is up here. Um, this hose is coming in from the heater core and the bottom of that reservoir or I guess technically that's an expansion. I think. So clean that up and then get ready for the hose clamps. The hose clamps just go around like this as you can see it swivels and then make sure it's pushed in there and then you're just going to turn this all the way until it totally pinches this in and then put the other one on that line. Next before uh, un before disconnecting these lines we'll put the, the pump and, and, all, and the lines in some type of bag and then underneath it I have a bread pan that fits real nice in there to kind of hold it because you will lose a little bit of coolant not much but a little bit and you want to make sure you put the bag because the exhaust manifold is right back there and you will get a coolant burning smell if you get any coolant on there. If you do get coolant on there, spray it off with water before you start the car up and try to clean it as much as you can. So then once you have the bag ready, we're going to just undo these. And you may not have these types of clips or clamps. These are called Jubilee clamps. You may have spring clamps that you have to squeeze with the pliers to bring together. Whatever clamps you have, um, just make sure that when you're um, moving them back, you don't mess up the hose and you get past the feature. You can kind of feel like right here, that's where the plastic part of the hose, where the hose goes into on the pump ends. So you want to make sure you get back past there. That's also why you put these clamps back a little bit. So you have a place to put the uh, the, uh, the, the, you put these clamps back a little bit so you have a place to put these clamps. Okay, I have this uh, I have this hose partially removed. Not all the way yet, but I'll show how my coolant comes out. If you make sure that you have your clamp tied on really well. Do with one hand, but there it is. Not much. Okay. So the clamps work really well. Okay, next before we undo this hose, we're gonna take this rubber mounting thing and put it on the new one. So we want to try to line it up in the same way. So I'm holding the new pump in the same orientation. And I'm just going to make a mental note to line this knob up here, looks like, with about here. This just slides off. Alright, now I have this rubber thing on the new pump. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect this to that line, back, the one on the top. Okay, so I attached this. As you can see, it slid on just fine, even though it's a slightly larger diameter. I did have to open up this Jubilee clip all the way in order to slide it, but it, it does slide. And then once you get it down, just tack it down. Um, not so tight that you're going to cut this rubber with the metal, but tight enough that it will make a good seal. So next, I'll pull this hose off here. Down. I'll pull, pull this hose off here, the old pump, and put it right onto the new pump. Okay, so I just pulled that out and I, I wanted to show that you can see there's a bit of coolant. So hold the hose up when you're taking it out off of the old hose, and then with your other hand, pick that part of the, the or pick the whole new pump up and connect it, and you won't spill any coolant. Okay, now I have this almost all the way on. I'm going to push it back into the little alignment thing here. Okay. And now because of the angle on this hose, I'm actually going to go ahead and unclamp this. And that will allow me to push it on all the way. It won't leak because it's already on there very tight. And then I can unclamp this and plug in the electrical connection. 
Okay, so I just noticed that these are uh, Mercedes. They have a little Mercedes star on them. So um, you'll probably find these on different cars. I thought maybe they were somebody had replaced them. I'm just releasing this now. When you release this, you'll hear the hear bubbles as the coolant flows back in. And you're all set. As you can see, these clamps, they don't mess up the hoses. They don't... They really work great. But if uh, something is different about yours and you find that your clamp doesn't open up enough to get past this feature, you can buy these clamps at Home Depot or Lowe's. Again, they're called Jubilee clamps or hose clamps, and you would find them in the plumbing section or maybe buy like the garden hoses. They're only maybe a dollar each. Okay. Now I'm going to remove the hose clamp all the way with my other hand and uh, plug in the electrical connection and I'll take that plastic bag and the pan out and see how much coolant we lost. should be very, very little. Uh, no coolant in the pan and just this much coolant in the bag. That's maybe a tablespoon and a half. So um, this is the way to do it. You can see the Mercedes bends. Coolant is kind of a yellow col color. Sometimes it's called gold. It doesn't really look gold to me, but this is what a product you can use if you decide to just strain your coolant anyway for whatever reason. GAO or G-05 Xerox and you can get this at AutoZone or Advanced Auto and you can get it in 50-50 or concentrate. This is concentrate and I mixed it to 50-50. Just make sure you follow the directions on the back uh, to be sure here. It should say, you know, pre-diluted or 50-50 on it directly. I did get a little bit of coolant droplets down there. Right there by that strut. And a little bit on the exhaust manifold. So I'm going to spray that with water uh, so I don't get a crazy coolant smell because that will start smelling like coolant right away pretty much as soon as you start up the car so this here is the electrical connection so I'm going to connect that and that just goes in snaps in place I'm going to need my other hand but don't forget this electrical connection just double check that you have everything all back in the electrical connections plugged in and this is you can turn this pretty easily in here Turn it so that this hose isn't um, bent too much. You got your clamp in place. Everything's tacked down. No leaks. Cleaned up the coolant if you got any down there. And then put the rest of this thing back together. Put the air filter in. Put the air, back, air box back on. Move the bag out. Do the clamps. If you're having trouble with any of these clamps, just make note that the clamp part goes right here, not way down here. If you try to close it here, it won't close. It just goes right there. I'll remember that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that it's all put back together, we'll just take the coolant cap off and just run it for a little while. There's going to be a little bit of air bubbles, not much, because as you can see, we didn't lose that much coolant. We'll just keep that off, and the air bubbles should end up back here in this expansion tank pretty quickly. Just run it like that for a few minutes with the heater on high to open up the heater core and that ought to do it. Engine's running now. If you have a stethoscope like this, which you could get at Harbor Freight for a couple bucks, you can just listen to and you'll hear it. Just a slight whirring. Also, if you just hold on to this or this, you'll feel it slightly vibrating pump is working. If the pump's not working, you'll just 
feel what feels like normal fluid flow through it. So you'll feel a little bit of vibration from that. Violet for a while. Let all off. As you can see, I'm not getting any kind of bubbles or anything. Squeeze this. You can squeeze this hole over here. Okay. When you're bleeding out a coolant system, typically you want to wait till the thermostat opens to make sure you get all the air bubbles out. I'm not too worried about it on this, but I'll probably just do it anyway. Uh, one last thing after you shut the after you shut the engine off, you should hear this pump running for a few minutes. Hopefully you can hear that very quiet hum, but it's a hum nonetheless. And if you fill this hose and this hose, you can feel that it's pumping coolant through there. That's good. That's that's a good sign. You're supposed to be able to hear that. Don't mistake that sound though for the sound of the fan that's in inside here. The electric fuse box fan. Uh, if yours isn't making some sound afterwards when you shut the engine off, you probably need to replace this too. I will post a video of how to replace the motor on that little fan. Because the motor is only about eight bucks, but the fan's like 150 or something so that's how it's that's how you change this auxiliary pump without having to drain your coolant i hope this helps